Welcome to Podcast Marketing Secrets, a place for entrepreneurs, coaches, and CEOs who are looking to grow their business with a podcast, become a key person of influence in their industry, and get their ideal clients to come to them, also known as Attraction Marketing. I'm your host, Al Morenton. My guest today is Dr. Bo Bennett. Um, Bo has a PhD in social psychology. He currently runs over a dozen websites, has written over a dozen books, mostly on the topics of critical thinking, and teaches several online courses. He has been in the self-publishing industry for over a decade and has written multiple screenplays. Welcome to the show, Bo. Thank you. It's good to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So why don't you uh, fill us in a little bit about your background and what led you up to where you are now? Sure. Well, I went to school for marketing uh, back in the 90s because I always I always knew I wanted to be wealthy. <laughs> that was my number one goal. I wanted money. And I was incredibly interested in psychology, but I knew that that wouldn't get me where I wanted to be. So I focused on the marketing Honestly, I didn't have the best time at school. The school I went to was, uh, everybody was pretty much the same. Uh, it was a business school, didn't really like it much, but I got through. So I, after that, I graduated. I, I got involved in the internet back in 1994 when it was like just first starting out uh, commercially, that is. Mm. And people started hearing about it. So I was in the right place at the right time, started a web hosting company. And it turned out to be huge. Sold that in 2001. That was my big company I sold for $20 million. And then after that, I've been just doing a lot of different internet related, mostly internet related businesses online. And uh, and then I went back to school for psychology. I got my master's and PhD in psychology and wrote, as you mentioned, 12 books in the process. <laughs> and here I am today. Right on. That's awesome. Um, so is there something that sparked your interest, like, like in, uh, going back to school and pursuing that PhD in psychology? It, it was always the, my interest from a very young age. When I was about 10 years old, I was working for my father in his workshop, in his basement, just doing some stuff for him. And I was, it was a really boring, monotonous job. So I borrowed some tapes from my sister and my mother. They had a lot of motivational tapes, self-help tapes, you know, the classics, the Dennis Waitley, Zig Ziglar's, Anthony Robbins. So I would listen to those and I'd be completely, totally fascinated by it. I absolutely loved it. And that was, I mean, I, that's not really psychology, but it's kind of like pseudo-psychology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it piqued my interest in the idea of the, in the human mind and belief and all that. So um, that's what really got me interested in psychology. But as I mentioned, it was it was business that was my number one passion at the time and and that was what i pursued initially yeah for sure for sure and there there is a lot of psychology that goes into you know um into business kind of because you're, you're dealing with people this all day long right you know oh, sure yeah you know sales or employees what whatever you know that it's it's a it's a for, for sure that, that that's 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 super awesome and um so what what made you like, you know, back in the day, like, uh, how, how did you get into web hosting? I was actually into graphic design. When I was going through school, I made my money in graphic design, advertising specialties. Okay. So I used the, the school's computers. And it, it was funny because if anybody was around back then in the mid 90s, creating art with computers, you remember this thing called rendering. When you adjusted an image, you'd have to wait like five minutes for it to draw. <laughs> so it was it was really monotonous, but I mean, we fortunately wouldn't have to deal with that today. But uh, I, I was doing that, the graphic design. And then after college, I was I started a graphic design company and I realized that um, I it would be just incredible, like if I could use this thing called the internet to get my graphic designs to my clients, like immediately. I don't have to go to the FedEx office and FedEx it because they have to see a full color version and they have to like wait a day, they have to approve it, sign it and send it back. So like all this could be done like immediately over the computer. I thought that was amazing. 
So when I tried to figure out how to do that, I realized back in 1994, early 95, there were very few, if any, uh, like web hosting companies. Uh, there were, so I, I had to learn like what web hosting really was, how it worked. I hooked up with this guy who kind of ran a server farm, gave me a server. I used Apache software. So I started my own web server and I'm like, wow, this is great. I could, I could actually make small ones and give them to other people or sell them to other people. And that's what I did. I built a, I built a web-based interface so people can use like the web page to actually control their website. Uh, and it was kind of like the first of its kind at the time. So it just exploded from there. As you know, the history of the internet and websites. Right on. That That's super awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's amazing how like the little chains of events could, you know, uh, just, you know, shape your life basically. Oh, sure. Know? And um, it, it's super awesome that you're uh, like, uh, like really into business and marketing and, and, and all that, all, all, the, all that kind of stuff too. Um, you have a, like you're sort of multifaceted and, and um, uh, you, you using all your, uh, um, all the tools that you have to, to, to uh, help you with business and, and grow that. That's, that's super awesome. Um, so you did the, the um, exit, uh, at 20 million, you were still like in your late twenties when you did that? Yeah. 29 years old. Yeah. So I was, uh, before 30, which was my goal. <laughs> so that was good. <laughs> that, that's super awesome. So that, that must've been like a drastic, like a lifestyle change for you. Like, you know, at, well, at not young. as drastic, not as drastic as you would think, because at the, the last couple of years before I sold, we were doing extremely well. Mm -hmm. So we had like tons of money coming in. So I, I was, I was kind of used to the cash flow as of then. And really once I got that big chunk of money, it was just like a big number in my bank account. My lifestyle really didn't change too much. Right on. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, that, that's really cool. So um, I was noticing that like, like you deal with like cognition, critical thinking, uh, the thing is thoughts something like logical fallacies. So can mm -hmm. you explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, just to, to go back a little bit, after I sold my business, I was, uh, I was doing some other businesses and it kind of like slowed down a little bit. And that's when I really wanted to pursue like my academic um, ambition a little bit more. But before I did that, uh, one of uh, a friend of mine gave me a, a book basically on religion, trying to convert me to a religion. And, uh, and I, I, like, I, I grew up Catholic, but I just thought it was kind of strange. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll read it. Like, what is he trying to do? Like, I didn't understand this whole conversion thing. So I read the book and it was just like, it was so weird to me, like all these claims that were being made and the things that were being said, so I, I wanted to learn a little bit more about that, like academically, not like really like as from a religious perspective, but like, you know, what's going on? Like, do people believe this? Um, why do people believe this? Am I supposed to believe it? There were a lot of questions I had. So I basically started a, a, a website to debate and talk about topics dealing with religion. Uh, so I was involved with that a little bit too much for about like three years. <laughs> and, and in that process, that's what, like I said, okay, I really need to dive into this whole concept called the human mind. Because one, one factor that I found that connects everybody and everything that was going on and all these different beliefs is uh, the human mind like the, the psychology of it, the, the psychology of belief, like why do people believe certain things and why do other people like have an incredibly difficult time believing things? What's this whole idea called evidence, like logical fallacies, like people would, would make these claims that were clearly problematic, but it was difficult to see why at first. And I realized that what those are, they're called logical fallacies. They're errors in reasoning and they're also kind of manipulative tactics. If you ever watch the news, you're probably very aware of these and, and politicians and, and what those are. So I was fascinated by that again. Again, it's all has to do with psychology, the psychology of it, why we believe some of those things. 
so that's when um that's when I kind of started the uh, my academic pursuits and studied philosophy and then actually formally went to school for back to school for a masters and then ultimately a PhD and I focused on social psychology so social social psychology and cognitive psychology it it really has to do with uh, you know the, the thoughts we have and how we relate to other people and how other people's actions and behaviors can affect our actions and behaviors so the, I found that part the most interesting. I, I didn't really care much about the um, the the mental health portion of it, like th th that part of psychology. So I'm not a mental health professional. So if somebody says, oh, you, like you're a psychiatrist. No, I'm nothing like a psychiatrist or I'm not even like a psychologist in that I don't. I don't help people with their personal problems and struggles in that way. I'm more of a, uh, I, I took the academic side, more of a researcher. There's like the mental health and then there's the researcher. If you, if you consider that like a split, the two different uh, areas of psychology. So I'm on, I'm on the research end. Right on. Yeah. That, that makes sense too. You know, so, so you're sort of like seeing how it affects uh, like all of that affects society basically, you know, in an overall view and even the you know, subsects of it and things like that. that that's awesome. And I could see how, like, if you understand that stuff, you you know, just like anything else, you, you know, you could, you know, use it for good or evil too, you know? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is uh, I, I'm pretty much, I consider myself a programmer by trade, mm -hmm. like ever since 1994, when I started programming and programming the internet and learning like the different programming languages, I, I really was drawn to that because I, I love the idea of creating the code to make things happen. And maybe it's kind of like a God complex that programmers have, because you are kind of like the God of your website <laughs> when you have complete control over things and you can make virtually anything happen. So it, it, um, it, I really took to it and, and I loved the logic of it because programming is like perfectly logical and mathematical and things happen when things happen, there's a reason for it. <laughs> and, and there's like a perfectly logical reason for it. It just doesn't happen willy nilly and you can't figure it out. So, uh, so I really like that. And then I, I, I see a lot of parallels with, with the programming and the, the critical thinking. And, and the same thing, like when it, when it comes to like business or doing anything, dealing with people in relationships, there's that element to it where, where you could kind of see through a lot of what's going on, like the code, let's call it, the, the code of human language and human behavior and how we respond. And you, you kind of see through the code, uh, see through the behaviors and the language into the code, and you really know what's going on. And, and that's what I found most interesting about like my pursuit of learning psychology. Uh, it, it's to be able to, to, to see things that, that other people can't see. And the difficulty, of course, is to try to explain it to them, like what they're missing. And the reason that that's a, always a difficult pursuit is because of what's called cognitive biases. A lot of people have these very strong cognitive biases that prevent them from from seeing things really the way they are uh, versus seeing things the way they want to see them. Um, and and that's difficult. If I could crack that code, I'd be extremely happy and probably the most uh, popular person in the world. But <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I don't know if uh, if there's such a code to crack on that one. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and and it's and it does uh, amaze me, like you know, so, how you could you know um, you see it in other people, but I'm sure it happens to me as well. But you know, but um, how like something could just be so that something somebody believes in is so, just so off, you know, right. and, and not correct. And, and even sometimes an outright lie and, um, and, and they can't see it first for whatever reason. And, and, and no amount of proof um, can change that. And, and sometimes when you show them proof, it, it makes them hold on to the belief even stronger. Right. Yeah. The backfire effect. Yeah, it, it's it's really 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 interesting. So, um, the you you mentioned like like, like you, you know you're able to see these things you know um because you have that you know this you know like a more refined you know sense of critical thinking and things like that. Um, so it's a it's like a, a learned skill you know I, I guess some people 
um, get it naturally, whatever, but I'm sure, but like, an, I'm sure it's a, a learned skill as well. Um, so I saw that you ha had uh, courses and things like that, that you have. So do you, do you teach people how to increase their le levels of cognitive thinking and things like that? Yes. Yep. Um, so on my, on my website, I've got a bunch of like, that's where pretty much my, my, all of my books follow that same pattern of teaching people how to think more critically, more logically, reasonably. And then I have a couple of courses too. If people don't like the books, they could go to the courses. The courses have some videos in it. They're a little bit easier to ingest for those who don't like the uh, the written word or the spoken word. I've got all the books on audio as well. But yeah, that's, um. and, and when I taught too, I, I taught at a local university here in Massachusetts for a few years. And th that was, that was fun, but, uh, I, um, I didn't like the, uh, the commitment to travel and then having to grade that, that, that really wasn't for me too much, but I did enjoy the teaching part. That's awesome. And yeah, and I, I have your, uh, the bobanet.com pulled up right here and you have some really interesting, uh, titles for your books, like, you know, positive humanism and socially psyched, you know, <laughs> and, uh, one of them that sort of caught my eye was uh, the that uh, squ that uh, squat uh, oh. <laughs> the the something sitcom whatever yeah. it is yeah yeah that was my first uh, my first attempt at a, a a fictional writing and it was um, it turned out to be a ten a ten episode sitcom that uh, I started about five years ago. And I completed about a week ago, believe it or not. And it, it's it's fully up on YouTube now. And you could see all 10 episodes or about 20 minutes each. And it's at squatspotfitness.com. And that'll take you right to the YouTube channel. And it, it's, it's a sitcom that incorporates pretty much everything that I'm about. Like there's, you have to look at the subtext. There's a lot of critical thinking in there, logic, reason, there's tons of psychology. Uh, and, and this really came about as, as my 40 plus years of going to gyms and fitness centers and, and just observing some of the behavior there of the people. And, and it's, it's a comedy gold mine. It, I mean, <laughs> there's so many hilarious things that have happened that that's what kind of sparked the creation of this. And, and I just did 10 episodes. I could do, you know, a hundred more, but it was, uh, it, it was a fun experience doing it. And I ended up doing all the animation myself and everything. And it took a long time, but it's up there. So it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. I own, I owned a gym for 28 years. Oh, no, it's a way. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a special animal. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh yeah. You'd love it then. You definitely have to, uh, to watch it. Yeah. We're going to check it out for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, um, what, what, so what kind of business uh, is attractive to you right now? Like, what, do, what, do you, what are you doing right now? So I've been in the publishing industry, like the book publishing industry for the last like 13 years or so. And uh, just recently, probably like in, in the spring of this year, I had access to AI for the first time, like commercially, so I could I could use and interact with ChatGPT. And as a programmer, I could actually use it for the programming. And I, I could tell you that I dropped everything that I was working on, including Squat. That's I, I did like a, eight episodes in in I animated like eight episodes in two months, and the last two episodes took me like five or six months because I was just so busy with the AI. But that's what I've been working on, artificial intelligence and incorporating that into the publishing industry. And right now I've got websites that use AI to do all the audiobook narration. And I have got the website that uses uh, AI to actually write books for you. For, you just give it the idea, walk it through, and that's called bookbud.ai. So that's been um, hugely successful. And, and that's, uh, that's what I'm most excited about right now. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, and, and you're touching on a bunch of stuff there too. Like, you know, like the, you know, what pe people feel is like the ethical use of AI and things like that, especially with things like book publishing and copywriting and all, all that kind of stuff. Cause that, you know, that's the world I live in, you know, is copywriting and marketing and, 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 sure. and a bunch of things like that, you know? So, and, I, and I've written a, 
a book, I mean, you know, for in because for the well, wellness business, a better better living with whole foods, you know, it was like it was a um, really cool book. But yeah, so so what what do you think about that with the um, AI and you know helping out writers and things like that? Well, I I think it's like any other kind of improvement that we've seen, like technological, uh, industrial improvement over the the decades, the centuries. There's always going to be some kind of technology that that displaces human labor, and that's never going to change. It's been the it's been that way for over two hundred years, and that's what we're seeing now. But people are more afraid of it because I think this is the first time where this technology is so much like a human and has the potential to be so much like a human that it could replace so much of what we do and so much of what what so many people do so it, it's a, it's scary to a lot of people and i completely understand that but my uh, my advice and my warning is not to fight it and to embrace it and find out how you could use it to your advantage like it, it virtually any any job right now where ai is like under threat like a, a, a or the job is under threat by ai you can find some way to use ai to make your job uh, to make it better to do a better job and maybe not put as much time into it and maybe for like some jobs you're just going to be out of business if that's all you do. So you really need to say, okay, what else can I do? Um, like for for example, for me, I've I write nonfiction books essentially, and AI is already kind of putting me out of business. And and I say that with a big caveat because AI is incredibly good right now. It writes like at a college level. The books are fantastic. They're better than about 95% of all the authors that I deal with when, that who write AI, who, who write uh, nonfiction books. So it does an incredible job, but it's not quite to the level yet where it could beat that 5% of, of humans who do an amazing job at writing books. So like... Out of the dozen books that I've written, I would say that AI could do a better job at probably like 10 of those books. It could rewrite 10 of my books and do a better job. But two of my books, where my real specialty is with my with my, the, the PhD and my like decades of experience, I don't think like it could com come close to that right now. So there's still a way to, to like for an author to um, to write, you you just got to up your game. And I think that's a good thing. It's kind of pushing everybody to do a little bit better. You you can't just turn out the same kind of junk that people have been turning out for a long time because AI could do a better job than that. But the, the main message is uh, there's going to be times when AI is is going to like potentially uh, do away with a lot of different jobs. And just like the, like the coal miners and... Uh, <clears throat> And the, the people who drove the horse and buggies and like you're you're gonna have to find another job. I mean, that's that's the way it is. It's unfortunate for for those people, but overall it's it's not going to be a bad thing. I really believe like AI frees up our human ingenuity and creativity. And at least for me, it's it's allowed me to do so many higher level things that that I wouldn't be able to do normally because I'm usually bogged down with these minute tasks. Another great example is like with programming, like normally when I'm creating scripts and updating my website, I'm writing code pretty much line by line and copying and pasting from old code and, and looking up and I have to research like, okay, how do I do this? And it takes a really long time. But now with AI, AI, I could just talk to it like a human basically and tell it what I need and it writes me the code and it saves me tons of time. And this isn't like high level stuff. I mean, this is this is the kind of code that when I write it, I'm, I'm just like bogged down with these minute details and it, it's it's things that I would rather not do. So it really has helped me in that way. And I think that everybody should think like that. And how can AI help you? Um, how could it free up your time? How could it give you access to, to more of your creative 
and uh, creative juices and ingenuity and how could you take advantage of that uh, there is a way i think there's a way for everything so you you just got to think about that everybody has to think about that yeah for sure for sure and like like with me um you, you know like we do we help people with their, their podcasts you know and and youtube channels and putting out the the content for that and repurposing and doing all that kind of stuff so and there is the AI, you know, programs or whatever that could help with that, you know, and putting in prompts and things like that to help with show notes or, you know, posts or whatever. And I, I find that it, with, with, as a business person, it's almost like the mechanic, you know, you like, you like working on other people's cars, but not your own. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause you're just re re recreating all this stuff and, and or, or creating from scratch and, it's almost like the AI, I'm, I'm using it to re-inspire me inside of my own business and and and, and create things, you know, because it's, it's not a blank slate, you know, the, this, this, the white screen, you know, there's some ideas up there and it's almost like you're masterminding with this artificial intelligence, you know, and uh, and it's there, there at your will, you know, whenever you need it. So right. I'm, I'm trying to see it that way, you know, and... Um, you know, I'm still taking time and, 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 you know, rewriting and doing things and, but, but, but there's, but it sparks a ton of ideas on it. And, um, and, and like you said, I'm trying to see it in a positive light because anything, you know, you, you know, from, you know, weapons on down can be used for good and bad, you know? Sure. Right. So, so, um, so, so yeah, so I'm, so, so you know, instead of trying to complain and be one of those people, just, you know, try to try to see that positive light and, and then show other people, you know, that there is something positive that can be attained from it, you know, instead of just like shunning it. Yeah. So how, how old are you? 51. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just turned 58 a few days ago. And Perfect. so like, um, you know, so it's sort of that time when, you know, you know, I, I went up, uh, I graduated in 84 and that's when the computers were like that, that, that year they first came into high school, you know, and, and it was like a DOS, you know, you had to put the right. disc in there and, <laughs> and write all your own stuff. And, um, you know, so we've gotten to see, you know, like the need to em embrace things instead of shunning them off because it could be something that going to be envelop a, a huge part of your life you know yeah i mean that's a perfect analogy just think back to when the computers came out and people were freaking out like oh, i was gonna put us out of business everybody who was doing things manually that computers kind of took over and, and and did for people it it didn't make the world worse <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it made arguably it, it made the world better in so many different ways by by doing this monotonous work that humans don't have to do now and the same thing with robotics. Robotics has been around for for pretty long, and it's going to get even more incredible with artificial intelligence. But just think about all the people that that don't have to be um, on the factory line. Like if, if you're familiar with the movie uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Charlie's father, his job is to put the caps on the toothpaste. He does it one after another, and he lost his job to a robot that does it. Uh, and then at the end of the movie, he gets the job uh, fixing the robot when it breaks down. So, I mean, that's the kind of, that. that's like a perfect uh, evolution of a, a, a career or of, of like somebody, what they're doing and how they can kind of rethink and, and relearn what they were doing and do something a little bit different in order to be more productive. And I'm pretty sure that Charlie's father, by fixing the uh, the, the machines, is probably more satisfied and more fulfilled in his job than uh, than actually putting on the the, the little caps, so it, yeah, it's gonna sure. it's gonna shake things up, no doubt. But um, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's that's a really great way to uh, to put that too, you know, because you you could have you know uh, these monotonous jobs that just like well somebody has to do them, you know, like right. um you, you know it could potentially you know free up those people to actually have these more fulfilling jobs or things that that might otherwise that that might actually be needed but we just don't know right now because t so much time is preoccupied with something else you know right yeah yeah so so, so yeah there's a bunch of avenues that could be opened up there, there's all kinds of like you said ben ben benefits to it so um 
so so yeah is, is there um uh which i'm gonna call it is there anything that i'm that i'm that i'm missing forgetting to ask you about or anything like that that, that you, that's really important that you do uh, i mean geez we do so many things we could talk about tons of stuff but uh for the most part we we covered a lot of uh, good ideas i think in in terms of critical thinking logic reason why it's important um how it could help you with business uh some of the sitcom stuff book bud yeah we we covered quite a bit right on right on and then like, like how, how do you market your business Mostly, I launched my my most recent business through Google AdWords. Um, I, I found uh, I do some Facebook advertising, but uh, Google AdWords I found has been the most successful for for what I do. Awesome, awesome. And then, is there like uh, one like big idea or key takeaway that people should take from this episode? I think it's the uh, the importance of critical thinking that's uh that's the big idea that's the something that people should really focus on that probably don't um it, it's so important when it comes to decision making as well and decision making is as you know is a critical part of pretty much anything you do in business you're always faced with important decisions to make so i i think um and and there might there may be people listening who are really good at business and really good at decision making but yet in their personal lives, they may not be the best critical thinker. And that's an, a psychological phenomenon called compartmentalization. It's when we compartmentalize certain parts of our lives that are kind of untouchable to reason, critical thinking, and logic. But everything else, we, we'll, we'll apply those things to. So... I, I would probably leave your listeners with with that challenge. Is there any part of your life that you really aren't applying critical thinking, logic, and reason, and you're really just being guided by your emotions, guided by what you've always believed, what you've grown up with, uh, the, the the social environment that you're in? Everybody else believes it, so you kind of don't want to not believe it because it would make you an outcast, uh, but if you're if you're being honest with yourself and you have and and you're being critical of, of your own thoughts I, I think that everybody needs to 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 basically believe what's true and uh, and do the best they can to distinguish between fact and fiction in all domains and areas of their lives that's awesome that, that, that's those are some really key points that you just you just brought up you know because uh, uh I'm, I'm sure that as people uh increase their levels of you know critical thinking and that decision making and all that that there's a lot of emotional stuff that can come up with that because you might realize that you know you've been following this one path or this one belief because of this people maybe, maybe even your parents and you find out that it's not true it's the lie and that you've been lied to your entire life or something like that and that could be traumatic you know oh yeah and and, and you just want to like you say but still believe that because it's it's going to change your whole trajectory or your whole you know and and and, that, and that's really really hard so um for the people that out there that like hey like i want to find out more about this critical thinking and maybe increase my levels of critical thinking and improve my decision-making skills and, you know, improve my business skills. Uh, how could they get a hold of you or follow you? Sure. I've got two primary websites. One is for my, my books and educational material. And you could find that under bobennett.com, B O B E N N E T T.com. The other one is all my business sites, and that's where you could also find Squat, and that's under archieboy.com, A-R-C-H-I-E-B-O-Y.com. Right on. And Archie, that, that was your doggy? Yep. Right on. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So first Cool, dog. cool, cool. And we'll be sure to include those links in the show notes for the video and audio for this episode. Right on, and thank you again for coming on. All right, you bet. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So that concludes this episode of Podcast Marketing Secrets. This is Al Morenton signing off. I hope you have a successful day.